How many of you have heard the Lord's Prayer the way we just read? Now, I know we all know the Lord's Prayer because we prayed it together just a few moments ago. But in the Gospel of Luke, we hear, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. Well, the gospel lesson begins with Jesus drawing away and praying, which is frequently the case. But it also begins with the disciples coming and asking, teach us to pray. Does that strike anybody else as a little bit strange? The disciples at this point have been with Jesus through some very significant moments of his ministry. But still, they are asking, teach us to pray. And what does Jesus' parable about an unexpected guest and troubling a friend and neighbor in the middle of the night tell us about prayer, about our faith journey? The disciples, like many people, and possibly even some of us, were uncertain about how to come to God in prayer. Witnessing Jesus draw away to pray, the disciples also wanted to know how they could approach God in their own prayers. So they sought the guidance of their friend and teacher. Maybe you can relate to the scandalousness of not knowing how to pray like the disciples, or maybe like Jesus, you've been asked, teach me how to pray. I personally have encountered this question a f more than a few times lately, and I have to admit, each time I have to pause and think about how to answer. This question was tough for the disciples 2,000 years ago, and it's still a tough question today. Part of the reason is because our prayers are personal. They are our connection with God. And being a personal thing, there's no right or wrong way to pray. But it can feel invasive to have to discuss our private rituals and relationships to others. It's kind of like on game day, you put on that specific pair of socks or maybe a t-shirt so that you make sure your team wins. Or maybe it's the way your family holds special meal time. Anyway, maybe relating to that scandal is a little bit more. Sorry. <laughs> when I think of this question that Jesus was given, I think of how Jesus might have approached it. I imagine, like me, he stopped and took a deep breath, and he thought about what he was going to say, and he provided a clear answer. Pray like this. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. The prayer is simple. It talks to God as an honored family member using simple words. Powerful and plain. It gives glory to God. It petitions for what is needed. It seeks forgiveness and asks the ability to persevere. Is this what you would say if you were asked how to pray? Talk to God as a close friend, share what is on your heart, and ask for God's direction and help. Jesus doesn't stop by providing this simple prayer because the disciples didn't ask for a prayer. They asked to be taught how to pray. Often when we study this part of scripture, we focus on the prayer. That it, and skip over the parable because it seems a little bit out of place. But what can we as a congregation learn if we stop and wrestle with this short parable? What is Jesus trying to teach the disciples and us? 
In the parable, a guest arrives unexpectedly in the middle of the night. Upon his arrival, the host wants to make his visitor as comfortable as possible, but he needs a little help. So he goes to his neighbor at the late hour and asks for bread. The neighbor has already cleaned up the kitchen, put the kids to bed, put away the livestock, and most importantly, bolted the door. So he's not interested in disturbing all of this and getting up and giving bread. So he refuses. But this host is determined to take care of his guest and shamelessly calls to the neighbor to give what is needed. Eventually, the neighbor gives in and helps. Now, I suspect all of us can relate to one or more of these characters. The tired and hungry guest, maybe the surprised host, or even the annoying neighbor. But what do these characters tell us about prayer? Interestingly, to understand this passage, I resorted to prayer itself. I prayed it, I studied the word, I prayed some more. Yes, I was praying over scripture about prayer. Does anyone here remember the movie from 2010 about dreams inside of dreams? It was called Inception. This was kind of like that, except for it was prayer inside of prayers or prayerception. Anyway, after my many prayers, three lessons emerged that are important for our prayer lives. To sum them up briefly, I would, they are trust, be shameless, and be willing to answer. These three characters are in a community with set structures and expectations, especially in regards to hospitality. The first character, the unexpected guest, arrives in the middle of the night. He comes to his friend's home, seeking protection from the night in the form of shelter. Much like Jesus' disciples seeking help to pray, when the guest, trusting in his friend's commitment to be hospitable, knocks on the door, it is not only opened, but the host goes about preparing a proper welcome not only providing lodging, but also a meal, just as Jesus fulfilled the requests of the disciples. When we pray, we too are God's guests, God's friends traveling in the dark world in need of companionship and shelter. When we knock at God's door in prayer, it is answered. God hears our petitions and responds with what we seek and more. Now, I'm not saying that God gives us everything we pray for. I mean, how many of us have prayed for a new car? But I am saying that God gives us whatever is needed for us to live a holy life. The house does, is missing a few things, most importantly, bread. And he decides that providing a meal to his guest is really important, so he goes and requests bread from his neighbor. When we heard the passage earlier, the word shameless was used, but in many translations, the word persistent is used. This really struck me as I was preparing for today, because persistence is usually a really positive word. You know, you're going above and beyond, you're doing everything you can do to do what is needed to acquire resources. But shameless is very rarely a positive word. Usually we use it to suggest that somebody is being inappropriate, they're being disgraceful, and they don't have a lot of regard for the people around them. The difference is important in our parable because we're talking about a society where how you treat your guests and how you respond to your neighbors determines how much honor you have. And honor is probably the most important currency someone has. The host is willing to risk being dishonorable. In our world, that's rudeness. In order to receive what is needed for his guest, 
When we pray, we too must risk being considered rude, shameless, when we offer praise to God and petition for our needs and the needs of others. This past June, a young man named Roy Conster was preparing to deliver his valedictorian speech during his high school commencement. Recently, before the commencement, the school district had voted to discontinue offering communal prayers at graduation. Roy was very upset about this, and after prayerfully considering and discussing what to do, this young man stepped to the podium and began to deliver his speech, except for it was no longer the prepared remarks that had been approved, but rather the Lord's Prayer. This bold act made headlines for a short while and raised a number of questions, which if any of you are interested, I'd be happy to talk about with you later. But what I found interesting and really struck me about the story was the shamelessness Roy had for praying. Roy believed that praying was important and should be shared with the people gathered. So he used the time he was given the time that was given for him to address his classmates and shared a prayer. How many of us would be so bold? How might that boldness look in our lives? One way might be to ask someone who's hurting if we can pray with them. Often, when we see challenging situations, such as a stranger crying or a friend having a bad day, we feel unable to help, but what if we stopped and asked that person if we could pray with them? Now, I realize this idea may be uncomfortable and not exactly socially common, but what if stopping and asking the person if we could pray with them was exactly what they needed to come to a relationship with God? Now, we, of course, can pray for people without stopping and asking them. But being bold, being shameless, is what in our prayers is what we are called to do. Imagine with me someone in need, asking and offering a simple prayer. Lord, you are mighty and the source of all strength and healing. We thank you for being present in our, all situations. We ask you to sustain us as only you can do. Amen. How do you think someone would feel if we offered such a prayer on their behalf? Prayer is not always done in secret, and it isn't always quiet. Many of us pray over our meals, and we have certainly have prayed together in worship here today. We are called to pray when we are filled with joy and when we are sad. We pray when we are in need of comfort and forgiveness. And we pray, are called to pray for all people and situations. Prayer is communicating with God. Just as the host was persistent at his neighbor's door, we too must be intentional and unyielding in our offering of prayer for ourselves and others. We've talked about that guest who knocked in the middle of the night and the door opened. And we talked about the host who not only answered but gave a proper welcome without holding anything back. But what about the neighbor? In my research, many people equated the host as being us and the neighbor as God. And that bothered me, because what does that say about God and his commitment to us? I decided that God is not the neighbor. Rather, I think that hesitant neighbor represents our own resistance to answering the calling of our hearts to talk with God. God is the shameless host who already has welcomed the seeker, but in order to supply what is needed, the door must be answered. To take off the lock of social expectations, the worry about what others might think, 
the hesitation to trust in God so our prayers can be answered. I told you earlier that I can relate to receiving the question, teach me to pray. If you haven't encountered this question, I encourage you today, this week, to stop and consider how you would respond because I believe it will happen. Because living in relationship to God, living prayerfully and in service to God, this question can come from any number of places. Maybe a close friend or a complete stranger, maybe a child or an adult. Maybe even from a long, someone we consider a long time believer, or maybe it's a person newly seeking God in their life. As simple as prayer can be, it takes time and a community to learn to pray. God is our teacher through Jesus Christ. He taught us a simple prayer, but also that we must trust, be persistent in asking, and respond to the knock at the door. When we do these things, when we ask our Heavenly Father, our friend, our teacher, we will and do receive the Holy Spirit which sustains us. I am personally asking you to join with me from now and into the future to make prayer an active part of your faith journey, an intentional exercise of being present with God. When a friend is telling you about a sick relative or a bad day or a difficult situation, don't only open your heart, but open your commitment to God and say, I know you're hurting and I wish I could do more, but all I can offer is to pray with you. Would you like to do that? And when you're out and encountering people in the world, allow yourself to be bold Introduce yourself and offer to pray with them. It is a, someone in struggling. It's as simple as saying, hi, my name is Sarah. I see you're really struggling. Would it be okay if I prayed with you? You see, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are all called to be in the world, sharing the good news and praying for the difficult situations that we encounter. Stand ready to answer God's call on your hearts, and so that when God puts a situation before you, you can be ready to trust and be shameless in your love of God and answer. God never fails to answer when we knock. God never fails to give what we need for a holy life, but we have to be willing, willing to respond when we hear God calling. Are we ready to answer? Please join me in prayer. Lord, teacher, and friend, you sent Jesus to us that we could learn to pray. You sent Jesus with us to learn to serve. And we love you and we appreciate all that you have given. Please help us to be bold, to be shameless in worshiping and glorifying you. Be willing to step out of what confines us so that we can comfort your world. Help us, Lord, to make prayer an important part of our journey with you. In your holy name we pray. Amen.